and that makes me jealous, not smug at all. But she does deserve to be happy. And I'm not one for rubbing my nose in jealousy. I continue to ponder things I find so ir utterly irresistible, so attractive about this lady. For one thing, she seems to enjoy being female. I like that. Because I, uh, I really enjoy being a man. But I find that, that quality very irresistible in a lady. That she enjoys being a female of the species. Because I really enjoy being a man. So that's a beautiful thing. And um, you know, they're God's finest work. The female is God's finest work. And uh, I, just, I just love it. And I love that women, they understand that. That they really are God's finest creature. That a man can have no better gift from God than a woman, a beloved, a good woman, a good godly woman with the right values that will treat her husband right. And she knows he's just going to, he's going to exalt her. And he's going to give her all those things she wants and needs to be the happiest woman in the world. And that's all I want to be. And secondly, she just seems so sweet. So friendly, so cute, so joyful. It makes me certain that she's a godly woman. And that just absolutely makes me nuts. Just nuts. Her cuteness, man, her delightfulness, and her adorableness. I just, I just love her so much. And she's not that young of a woman to be, you know, have that innocent aura, virginal kind of aura. Just that sweet puppy love thing. I just, God, I know I could be so happy with her. And I, I almost have to stop thinking about it because when I do, I just, I want her so much. And I, you know, you can't make somebody be with you. And I, I wouldn't want to, but hey. If she wants to give me a try and see, man, I'm telling you what, man, we could have some fun. I, I know that. I'll, I'll treat you like a princess, and I will, um, I'll pay every time, babe. I, I listen. I've got it. I've, I can afford to do that. And my finances are just looking better and better. I've got all kinds of hope. I'm a, an inventor, and I'm an innovator. I'm a designer. I've got all kinds of irons in the fire. And I just don't care about being rich. I just don't. But I'm a smart guy. And if I want to be rich, I can. And I think what I really need is to have my values in order. I've got to have my priorities straight. And I want a beloved. I want a woman that wants me just for who I am. That's what you get. I don't want a woman after me because of my bread, man. But I've got no problem in making tons of dough, dude. I can, I, I, I'm a smart guy. I know I can do it. I know, you just need to find a couple of angel investors you can work with. I've already got, I got a great garden tool, a cultivating tool. I've already designed digging tool, and I just need to get off the dime. I've got it, they're building it for me, it, and, you know, I'm going to be able to go and have it mass produced if I got a few bucks to get started, and I know that the people in the know, from the novices to the professionals out there, they're going to want it as one of their... It's just like shovels in garages. Everybody in the world, especially the professionals, have a shovel. Well, that's what I got here with this tool I've designed. So I know I've got a seller to the people that can recognize what they're looking for. And there's no short. You need a, an array of digging tools. The more, the better when you've got digging projects, especially cultivating, weeding, that sort of thing, flower beds. It's ideal for all that stuff. So... I have no doubt that, um, you know, I can make a lot of money, but um, I just don't want to attract a woman like that. I, I don't want to get involved with any gold diggers and, um, you know, but I'm not opposed to being rich. I just wish it, I wish it didn't have anything to do with money. I just wish it was on God's terms. Just recognize that we're all born rich and it's just being withheld from us. Someday that's coming. Thirdly, when I think of holding her in my loving arms or even holding her hand, inhaling her essence of beauty, I enter another realm, one of sheer bliss, euphoria. And while my lack of coolness regarding her may come across as desperation, but it's not so. Understand that it is, that it is I that must live with myself, that must see his face in the mirror, that sleeps alone at night. And if I fail to do everything in my power to win her hand I know myself well enough to know I will forevermore have 
a very difficult time successfully doing those aforementioned things, like living with myself, looking in the mirror, sleeping at night. So I've got to. That's why I lack coolness. It's not desperation, sweetheart. It's just because um, I, 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 if I don't do something to let you know how I feel, uh, like King Solomon says, love, love that's restrained, it's, you know, better open rebuke. So there's no way I'm rebuking you. What sort of rebuke you for anyhow? It'd be illogical. So I've got to let you know that, yes, I would love to have you. And there's not a man on the face of the earth, I strongly contend, that will ever love you or appreciate you more. I say that with 100% full confidence. If my love is never required, at least I will forevermore be glad I fell in love with her and did my level best to win her hand. Okay, I'm going to get on to some thoughts from this past couple of weeks. Yeah, my friends, I know what I really need to straighten me out. God has made that very clear, and I need a beloved. Absolutely, there's no way I'm ever going to be content, ever going to be happy without a beloved. The most valuable thing in the world to me. God has made that very clear. This is the key to me being the puppy dog among men that I really want to be, to being a nice guy all the time. I could see it really making some profound changes in my life, in my demeanor, my attitude. I need it so much. I want it so much. And um, sooner or later, one way or another, God's going to, he's going to find a way and I'm going to have the hand of my beloved, whoever that might end up being. But um, I'm going to, I'm going to treat her like a queen, like a princess. And there's not going to be a happier woman on the face of this earth. So whoever it is. And uh, there's a lot of ladies I'm attracted to, but, um, you know, I'm, I'm a very heterosexual man. I just... But I just, something about her is like a long lost memory, a long lost love, a, like an ancient memory. And uh, it just, like it came back in full force and hit me in the face. Like, wow, that's the girl I, I really, God, there's something about her I just can't resist. I so find so irresistibly attractive. And just, I, I had to try. I, forgive me, sweetheart, if I'm too forward for you and I come across as desperate. But I had to do everything I could to try. And I've done it. And somewhere along the line, I'm going to let it go, okay? There may be a few more poems and talking about you, but for the most part, I just got to let you go, sweetheart. And that's it. Okay, on to thoughts. While it is true that the cream rises to the top, it is equally true that the scum also rises to the top. Might I add that the scum pollutes the cream, if allowed to, as is the status quo, the establishmentarian state of affairs. That's right. That's what we got. That's who's running the show at top. These tyrants, they're scum. They've risen to the top. They forced their way in there. As a murderous gaggle of criminals is who they are. That's running the show, creating the policies we all have to live under. We have each and every human being always existed within the parameters of the mind of God. And I'll add to that that we always will exist. When it comes to giving terse and to the point advice, it doesn't get much more succinct than to say, question reality. Yeah, everybody's seen those bumper stickers. I think they're very apropos. We really should. Whose reality are we listening to? It's tough being human. Why pretend it's not? How can the power of the female of our species ever be diminished or controverted when they can literally shut down human civilization in one generation? That while the male of our species often, get, often pays the female for the privilege of giving away his power as the male. I'm alluding to the market for prostitutes, female prostitutes, versus the market for male prostitutes, right? 
most men would go flat ass broke being a prostitute, but a lot of women can make pretty good bread, right? Escorts and whatnot. That just goes to show. I mean, this whole thing about giving the milk away. I mean, man, you have the issues, guys. Dudes, don't give the milk away for free, you idiots. Where's your power, man? You know, women are always going to be on top. I just want a level playing field. Be nice if we were equal, but we're far from it. And plus, the natural laws dictate they have an upper hand. I mean, it's just the way it is, right? But still, you know, you can, uh, you know, because there's a lot of loose women out there. I mean, we all know there's there's a lot of women that will sleep with anybody just about. I've run across many of them, especially when I was a teenager. Yeah, but back then everybody was screwing everybody. But there's a lot of loose women too. But the point is, is and they're giving the milk away for free. But, um, you know, I, I, maybe they just enjoy sex. There's the nymphomaniacs. I don't know. But, uh, you know, I know if I go to a bar tonight, I, if I'm really bent on getting laid, I, I can be a charming guy. And yeah, I, I, I can sweet talk her. And, yeah, I can find a way to get laid tonight for free if I want to. But I'm not interested in giving my milk away for free, you see. And that's how the bulls got to start being. They got to adopt that, that saying, too. You know, don't give it away, guys. You know, reserve your power just because the girl will sleep with you. You know, no, you want a commitment, man. You know, what are you, a loaf of bread? I mean, you, you know, that's, you know, no, you're not chopped liver. You're important too, guys. So show it, man. Stop giving your damn milk away for free. You go into a bar, I mean, a woman's going to get hit on ten times in the night. And it, it's... Oh, God, it's just sick. And, you know, every one of those guys would be glad to give his milk away for free. I mean, I feel like, a, you know, I'm talking to the wind, beating my head against the wall, telling guys not to give the milk away for free, right? <laughs> we all know they're a dime a dozen. Sometimes I feel alone in asking simple, though critical questions. For example, why does no one else ask, why is it that the nicest people, those that would make the best landlords, always wind up being the tenants? I contend it is because we have been trained, fostered from birth to be disingenuous lovers of money, born masters of deceit, including myself. Many people may be oblivious to these truths, the facts, this reality without knowing it. They have signed on to prescribing to the philosophy of ignorance as bliss and taking the path of least resistance, the temporary path of to destruction through ignorance and the scripture states that too that my people perish through lack of understanding through believing the worldly satanic definition of success is one thing and that one thing is money that success is money and remember we all have a propensity to being disingenuous we have an organic schism, a profound paradox perpetually taking place within our own members, within our own very essence, like a war within. We all have that going on. We're battling the carnal nature and the, with the spiritual nature. Spiritual nature in us wants to soar with the eagles. The carnal nature wants to bring us down to the ground. So this profound paradox perpetually taking place within our own members, within our very essence. But we can thank God that God knows what's going on and turn to him for advice. Simply being uncon unconcerned, indifferent, passive, complacent about the concerns of your fellow human beings is wrong. It is unethical, immoral, and frankly ungodly, yet we all can do it. Yeah, we can all be evil. I wrote a poem. I don't know why I titled it. Or I don't know why I'm nuts about her. Or I love her so fiercely. When I think of her, I don't know why I smile. I don't know why I so fiercely like her. Maybe it's her adorable spirit or her sweet, demure, charming spirit. It could be her delightful aura of kindness, of purity of heart. Perhaps it's just that I am a man whom is a connoisseur of pretty ladies, and she certainly is an exotic beauty with unsurpassingly attractive qualities. I don't know why. Why I would ever 
wonder why I'm absolutely nuts about her.